Okay, so uh, good morning everybody. Um, I would like to show you some results of uh, geophysical analysis uh, we conducted a couple of years ago in southern uh, Italy, uh, southeastern Italy, in the Gargano area in Apulia. And uh, maybe some of you have been also to Atlanta where I already presented uh, some first results um, of this analysis. Um, uh, in the meantime, uh, last year uh, we did then also uh, a 3D uh, uh, assessment of the geoelectric resistivity. Uh, and actually this presentation we will do uh, in two persons. So myself, I will do the introduction and then uh, my colleague uh, Patrizio Torese uh, from Pavia University will do then uh, part of the 3D uh, uh, assessment. Uh, we have another co-author on this uh, paper, which is Ivano Redin. Uh, he's from Genoa uh, University, and uh, he was leading uh, the research. Actually, the area uh, where we worked is the karstic area. It's a dolomitic limestone area where we have a lot of cavities and caves. Uh, and uh, we focused on a spot uh, close to Manfredonia, I will show you later on, um, that is known for actually uh, Neolithic, Paleolithic uh, findings um, yeah, in a cave which is called Scaloria. So just to show you some of the findings uh, of this uh, cave, um, so we have uh, uh, this is a Neolithic uh, cult site, uh, actually. Um, so there was also some dating, um, so uh, roughly 5000 BC for the Neolithic part. Um, but there is also, uh, in the, especially in the upper part of the cave, there is also some Paleolithic uh, findings uh, uh, under some deposits uh, that uh, crawled from the, uh, from the roof of the uh, cave. Um, so there was done also some excavations um, starting in the 30s. Um, and then in the uh, late 70s, um, there was a big excavation uh, led by some uh, American team. And then recently, 2015, uh, especially the colleagues from uh, Genoa were doing uh, another uh, excavation. Um, so the cave has different, uh, different uh, levels, uh, actually. So there's an upper level and the lower level. Uh, and especially in the lower level, as you see over here, uh, water is concentrating that is coming down actually uh, uh, from the uh, Gargano uh, massive. Um, and then you have also the upper part of the, uh, of the uh, cave, which maybe, show you the next slide. Uh, no, okay. Um, Anyway, um, what is not really known is the uh, real extent of the cave. Uh, so uh, just a little piece of the cave is known, so uh, roughly 15% uh, the colleagues uh, uh, thought. Uh, and uh, the rest of the cavities that might be there and might be also some uh, Neolithic or Paleolithic findings are not really known. Um, so the colleagues asked us actually um, if there are some methods to detect um, cavities or caves um, uh, in the near surroundings and we said okay we can test them some uh, geoelectric uh, electric resistivity methods uh, to detect these um, cavities and then potential uh, sites. So where we are, um, here, that is the Gargano massive, so we are in the south uh, eastern part of Italy. Uh, here's the Gargano, so then we have the Tavaliere uh, plain, and uh, here you have Manfredonia and uh, Scalori is somewhere uh, over here at the foot slopes of, uh, foot slopes of the Gargano. So as you see over here, so this is the Gargano massive, and then you have here uh, some colluvial deposits, uh, and uh, then you go over into the marine uh, terrace uh, areas. Anyway, as I said before, the area is characterized by dolomitic uh, limestone. So this is um, Google Earth uh, image, so we see the location over here, one to the over here. Uh, so you see nicely also the harbor area. And that is a view taken by a drone. So that is uh, actually the area which might be some uh, cavities or caves. And actually uh, in 2015 they did an excavation <coughs> starting over here, uh, drilling a hole over here. Oops. Drilling a hole over here and getting into uh, the cave uh, which is uh, normally not accessible. Um, so then 
uh, we started in 2013 with some first uh, uh, measurements of electric resistivity, ERT. Um, so these are basically are the black lines over here, you see. Um, and that was the uh, work we presented uh, last year in Atlanta. And then uh, we did also uh, these transects, actually 14 transects um, in this area over here. Uh, so the hole you have seen in the, uh, in the image before is somewhere over here, and the view was taken from, from above over here. Um, actually, there was also done some drillings, um, as you see over here. So we have here already some interpretation of the ERT and the drillings that was done. And actually, there were one drilling that was getting into a cavity, uh, the S3 drilling over here, whereas the S2 uh, drilling was not getting into, uh, into the uh, cavity area. So here an image of uh, the drillings uh, that have been done. Uh, material over here, you see that it's karstic area. So we have some, also some small cavities uh, in the uh, massive uh, dolomitic limestones um, as well. Okay, just to give you some idea about um, electric <coughs> resistivity values, you can expect um, four different types of uh, material. Um, so uh, here's the red line. Uh, you see uh, the uh, dolomitic limestone uh, is somewhere in this area over here. So normally it's getting from 1,000 to 5,000 old meters. So here you have the resistivity from 0 to uh, 1 million and the way around the conductivity is the inverse of it um, uh, here from uh, 100 to 0. So roughly we can expect values uh, for the massive uh, dolomitic limestones between 1000 and 5000 uh, ohms uh, meter, uh, whereas the hollows and cavities uh, normally start at 50,000 ohm meters roughly. Yeah? So, there might be also then the chance to, do, to uh, differentiate between cavities and uh, the massive uh, limestone. So here's some image uh, of the setting uh, we applied. So we did uh, the geoelectrics, we used the four-point light um, Lippmann uh, uh, device. Uh, we did 100 meter transects um, and the electrode spacing was actually two meters. Um, and we did two, uh, three different arrays, so Schlumberger array, a Vendor array, and Depot Depot uh, array. And we used a uh, geotest uh, to drive the to drive the the measurement. Oops. Oops. Um, we used first then uh, a DC 2D uh, in dress uh, from Günther to uh, do the inverse modeling. Uh, and then Patricio did a detailed 3D modeling um, and we did also some uh, GPS measurements to uh, get also the exact locations. So uh, there are different arrays as I uh, said before. So the depot depot array is characterized. We have two uh, electrodes where you have uh, the induction of the electric current and you have two electrodes where it is measured. Um, then the typical Venna array. Uh, you have uh, the inducting uh, electrodes A and B externally, and then you have uh, internally uh, the receiving electrodes. Um, they have all the same spacing, so that's typical for an array. And then we did also Schlumberg array, uh, same assess, uh, same setting, externally the induction and internally the measurement, but the spacing uh, is different. Yeah? So you have a larger spacing between the inducting and the receiving uh, electrodes. So that is the area we measured, I showed already before, so that all the green dots where the electrodes uh, were put, so 14 uh, different transects, um, and uh, we measured from the left to the right, so one after another, uh, and as I said, 100 meters, uh, roughly 100 meter long, uh, the transects. So, just to show you uh, a couple of results, uh, show you also the differences between the three uh, arrays. Uh, so in the top we have the depot depot, then in the middle the Venner, and in the bottom we have the Schlumberger. Uh, and you see already that there are distinct differences, uh, but also common issues. Um, so in red, uh, in the dark red, um, so we have uh, actually the uh, areas where we might have uh, caves, whereas in blue and in the lighter yellow there are the areas uh, where we have maybe the uh, limestone and uh, covering soil. 
So if I go through now uh, the different transects, so we have 14 transects from the left to the right, um, you see that there are distinct differences and that there is also some spatial 3D component uh, in there. So just to go through, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Uh, what you noticed is that normally Dipol Dipol is uh, a little bit more different from uh, Wenner and Schlumberger uh, because uh, uh, they, uh, the Dipol Dipol is more uh, accurate for especially for vertical features, uh, whereas uh, for the horizontal features it's uh, better to use than Wenner or Schlumberger. Um, so that's why there are these, uh, already these differences. Anyway, what you can see is that there are uh, spatial pattern in that you can interpret also in a 3D way. Anyway, these are just the uh, 2D uh, slides. So now uh, we did then also some uh, 3D modeling actually, and Patrizia is showing now uh, the results of the 3D modeling, and we did also then uh, uh, a synthetic model uh, just to validate uh, the data. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. My name is Patrizio from Universidad Maria Italy. So, uh, the second part of the presentation will focus uh, on the uh, three dimensional uh, model. Uh, so, uh, this uh, 3D inverse resistivity block model uh, was obtained from full immersion of uh, ERT files, shown uh, show you by uh, me as before. Um, uh, to achieve an, an overall uh, image of the uh, world volume investigated by uh, ERT uh, funds. Um, the uh, free uh, electronic arrays used for data collection, which are like Paul, Paul, Ben, Schumberger, uh, were combined uh, together before the inversion. So, uh, you, you uh, is involved in geophysical perspective, you know that uh, uh, the uh, image uh, achieved by the combination of uh, different electronic rays uh, um, uh, allows you to achieve uh, um, an improved imaging with respect to the imaging obtained from the elementary electronic array. No. Uh, so, uh, uh, the previous one. Ah, okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, this slide shows you um, two uh, different perspective views of the inverse resistivity block model. So, you can see here. Uh, this uh, light blue volume, uh, the electrical resistivity uh, ranks uh, uh, between uh, 13,000 and 73,000 from years. And this kind of body uh, is located at the net, uh, uh, ranging uh, between 4 meters and uh, 18 meters. The main body shows the top uh, at uh, 8 meters of depth, but uh, the small size bodies uh, start at the depth of 4 meters. Uh, okay. What does it mean, this body? Because uh, that's the question the uh, archaeologist uh, has to, uh, to be. Uh, is it a huge single cavity or is it uh, interconnected voids or partially or not interconnected voids or it's a combination of uh, single voids and uh, high porosity zones? It's hard to answer this question now at this uh, phase. So I, I'd like to show you, take you, uh, 
is a volume along with different slides. Okay. Uh, there is a perfect match between the 3D model <laughs> slides because it's the same model. Okay, they are all extraction from the model. So uh, this is uh, slice 22 meter wide uh, wide coordinate that uh, uh, in class uh, uh, drill uh, uh, core board uh, uh, core uh, drill uh, S1. After that we have uh, yeah uh, slice 60 meters including uh, uh, core drilling uh, uh, S2. And this is another slice, uh, one meter, but including uh, uh, core drilling uh, uh, S3. Uh, yeah. Uh, we have so uh, three core drills used for calibration. Unfortunately, two core drills are not deep enough to intercept uh, any cable. Okay. Yes. Yes. Typically located at eight meters of depth. Only uh, core drill S3 is able to intercept a cable. Uh, there is a good agreement between the stratigraphy revealed by uh, core drills and the resistivity block model. Uh, so you can see with uh, blue color uh, weekly cast file limestone. You can see here or the whole depth approximately of S1 uh, core drilling uh, in the first part of S2 core drilling. And here with the light uh, blue you can see the cracked limestone, but no cavity has been intercepted by these first two uh, core critics because they are too shallow, unfortunately. S3 uh, core drilling uh, is deep enough to intercept the void and there is consistency between the stratigraphy from the core drill and the inverse resistivity model. You can see here that uh, it's a depth uh, ranging between 8 and 9 meters uh, core drilling intercepting cavity the yellow area. Uh, this is uh, uh, in agreement uh, with uh, the inverse resistivity model showing this uh, uh, line. Okay. Uh, Okay, so uh, this is the exploratory cavity. This is uh, this uh, body revealed by the 3D uh, model. Uh, the problem is, uh, are we sure that uh, this uh, light blue body uh, is related to void? Not at all. Typically, a geophysicist uh, relies the uh, interpretation of a geophysical model uh, on the basis of uh, his own experience or his own sensibility of the data. But we need a quantitative assessment. Okay. How to achieve a quantitative assessment? By performing a synthetic data set model. Okay. So we have on the left side of the slice a predefined synthetic model. It does simulate different geological values. A first layer, weekly cast file limestone. Uh, uh, ranging between 0 and 1 meters of depth, uh, showing a resistivity of 700 meters. A second body related to cracked limestone, depth greater than 1 meters, and resistivity of 7,000 meters. Uh, the first one. 
Thank you. The third body is a single cavity. Its top is located at a depth of five meters, showing the A electrical resistivity. It's very, very high resistivity, as you know. Uh, this uh, synthetic model has been used uh, to generate uh, synthetic data sets, realistic synthetic data sets, uh, through forward modeling. Okay. So, we achieved uh, this model, this resulting image. You are able to compare this uh, resulting imaging uh, directly with the inverse resistivity model achieved by field data. Okay. The question is uh, how we able uh, by using the ERT surveys with this uh, experimental layout, how we able to detect our target it is uh, the single cavity, yes, because we are able to, but as you know, we are going to recover a wider bar, okay, it is approximately the same depth, but a wider cavity, with a strong underestimation of the resistivity, okay, you can compare this with this very strong underestimation, but that's typical for uh, this kind of service. The next problem is, uh, are we able to detect two single separated cavities with the same features? No. We are able to detect uh, only a single feature that is very wider. Okay with the same uh, strong underestimation of the resistivity. The third example is uh, the so-called uh, um, embryonic stage single. What does it mean? It's a cavity with a partially uh, collapsed roof that is not able to reach the surface. Okay? It's not a single, uh, it's not a skylight. Okay? How are we able to detect the cavity and it's a, a partially collapsed roof. No. We are able to detect this kind of body, this very dash, size body. So it's to understand uh, vertical resolution, lateral resolution, detectability of ERT method uh, under this experimental setup. So uh, coming up to conclusion. Uh, so electrical resistivity uh, tomography uh, has proven to be an effective and valuable method to uh, uh, identifying uh, caves, voids, hollows, uh, if calibrated uh, by uh, core drillings. Uh, the extent of the Scalovia cave uh, seems to be much bigger than expected, but we have to be careful in interpreting this geophysical uh, model. Uh, the 3D inverse modeling shows a good agreement with the Borio data, but uh, further calibration is needed, as you know, before two or also two shallow to achieve uh, to, uh, to intercept uh, the cavity. The uh, synthetic modeling is helpful to understand the limitations in identifying uh, uh, cavities. Um, it is allowed to uh, achieve uh, a quantitative assessment of uh, uh, the results. Uh, synthetic modeling uh, uh, is helpful uh, at two stages. The first one is the survey design before going to collect data. Uh, it allows you to, um, uh, to design properly uh, the experimental setup, uh, the type of the joint array spacing between electrons and so on. Uh, the other stage uh, is uh, after the inversion during the interpretation phase. Okay. Uh, generally, a slight overestimation of the cavity volume can be expected. And as you know, synthetic modeling can be uh, really helpful to you to uh, obtain uh, uh, an interpretation.
expectation. 